Hi, I welcome you all of you to Dr. Ram's Medical Coding Academy, Chennai. I would like to give a brief intro about my own self before I start this session of medical coding. So I just want to let you know that I am going to give you all much more series of videos and provide more insights and education on this medical coding process which is the fastest and the most booming industry currently. Well, thank you for watching all of you. I am Dr. Ramazabo. I had my undergraduate in psychology and post-graduation in psychotherapy. Later on, I did my homeopathic medicine and surgery in Chennai. I did my doctor of medicine in acupuncture. I am currently also looking after my patients and providing clinical care in homeopathy and acupuncture. So alongside, I have also entered into this field of medical coding. So I started my career as a medical coder way back in 2009. So now I have grown up to a level of a coding consultant for several companies in Chennai. I am more happy to let you all know that I was a college topper of homeopathic medicine and this gave me this confidence to crack the 33 different credentials of the US healthcare industry. I am delighted to share that you know, um, I possess the highest number of APC credentials in India and rank number one from my organization which I am associated with which is APC, the American Academy of Professional Coders. I am also a certified a medical auditor and a compliance officer. So I would like to shed some light about this medical coding process from the perspective of an auditor and that of a compliance officer. I was provided the opportunity to act as a speaker of the Chennai chapter of AAPC and I had taken two seminars on active wound care management and then the CPT code changes of 2018. So I have seen numerous students and I have offered education to numerous students by imparting the training for the CPT certification exams and for medical auditing and for the basic coding courses. Today it is, I take this immense pleasure to just elaborate on what this process of medical coding is all about. Now, coming to medical coding, so it's coding per se of medicine. So we also have the alternative codings, which is uh, programming and engineering, or it is a coding of law, which is a legal coding. Now talking about medical coding, it is coding of medicine. So now medical coders are in huge demand. If you see, medical coding stands on top of the care sector, not of 2020, but of 2050. So now we are all impacted by the COVID, the corona lockdown, the corona impact has given a revolution, especially by in the entire world. So now insurance companies are coming up with so much of infection plans. So the insurance sector, the mankind is now running after this medical care. So the most needed care that is needed is the medical or the clinical care. So medical coders are always in high demand. So why I am here in this platform is that I see like this field has an immense opportunity for people to tap, to tap the resources. And for that you need the right knowledge and the right training so that when we do a quality coding so that level of our healthcare will also definitely improve and that can be known from the quality of our people. So let me go straight into the topic. So what is medical coding? So it is the translation process. Coding is a translation. So who is a translator? The medical coder is a translator. So what is he translating? So imagine there are two people, one is a provider, when I say a provider, it is a healthcare provider. It can be a doctor, a physician or a nurse or a nurse assistant or a pharmacist, whoever. So they are called as qualified healthcare providers. So one is a provider on one end and the other end is the insurance company. So we have these medical coders who act as a bridge for these two people. So one is an institution and here is a provider. So the coder, he converts the language of medicine to the insurance language, which is a code. So a, provi a provider may be strong with the language of medicine, whereas insurance may not. So we need an intermediate guy 
who transitions the language of medicines and converts those into certain designated code sets. So in order to become a coder, there are so many organizations that certify you and accredit you to become a licensed or a qualified person to do this job. So it is all about assigning codes. So, and these codes are not just numbers, they are also of alphabets. So we are going to deal with alphanumeric codes. Now let's see what exactly is the nature of the work of a medical coder. Let's go to the presentation. Here is my friend Parvati who is driving a car on a highway. She is going to make a U-turn and while making it, she just has an accident. She meets with an accident. So what happened as a result of that accident, she injures her left shoulder and she is in terrible agony. She rushes to the immediate hospital and there wasn't any hospital working at nearby and she locates a physician's office, which is a clinic. She enters a clinic and she narrates the stories what happened to the doctor who was, who was there and the doctor now investigates the patient. So you can see Parvati having a, injured her shoulder and the doctor, she is reaching the doctor's office and she is getting a pain medication. You can also see that the provider is also looking after some x-rays as a part of investigation. Now, so this is what the incident that has taken place, right? So now, it is, this will be documented in a medical record and the coder has now have to start assigning these codes. If you see, car driver injured, so there is a code, V4A.5XXA is a code you will have to assign for the car driver who has been injured. The patient has a shoulder injury. So after this, uh, you know, the physician, after reading this x-ray, she just makes a tentative uh, diagnosis as the patient has an injury and that can be written as S49.92XA. So since the patient is injured, the patient has a pain, which is a symptom. So for symptom, it is young 25.512. So we have a simple coding rule when there is a condition and when there is a symptom which is related to that condition, you don't even have to code the symptom which is pain in left shoulder here. The patient rushes to a clinic. So that clinic has a designated code set as POS which is 11. And the doctor gives her a shot so for that, you can bill, the physician can bill for that as 96372. And the doctor is also inject, she is basically injecting a drug. So you need to bill for the drug as well. At last, she took an x-ray. And it is an x-ray of the left shoulder. So I am going to indicate that by way of a modifier called LT, meaning left side. So it is an x-ray, a radiological examination of the left side or the left shoulder, which is 73020. Now, if you see the S codes and the M codes and the V codes, now we can classify these codes as a diagnosis codes and procedural codes. So what is a diagnosis? So you should understand the difference between a diagnosis and a disease. A disease meaning a state of uneasiness. The patient is not in a healthy state or an apparently healthy state, right? Whereas a diagnosis is something which the provider comes out after a detailed review or the understanding of the patient's symptoms. It is a provider's judgment that gives out the diagnosis. There are so many diagnoses like provisional diagnosis, differential diagnosis, etc. So now, the physician makes a tentative diagnosis as a shoulder injury of a left top. So for which we have taken these codes. And you can see this manual which is ICD-10CM. This is a standard manual that is being adopted by the American Healthcare. So the ICD-10CM is being derived from the WHO's manual which is the ICD-10 or the International Classification of Diseases in short. Okay, 
So I say tensium is being derived from IZ10, which is a manual that is being published by WHO and Welly. So the coder will have to have an understanding and you know have a good understanding of this entire IC tensium coding conventions and guidelines in order to arrive at these code sets. Then we saw that the physician injected and she took an x-ray. So those are called as the procedural services. So the procedural service is injection and the radiological service is 73020. So here the coder will have to arrive at two different procedure codes. Lastly, it is a medicine, the medical supply, the drug which the physician has injected for alleviating the patient's pain, which is J1100. Now, can you see here? It is the coder's story to the insurance company. Now, can you see the coder's story, you know, what, how the coder is narrating this clinical encounter to the insurance company? He is narrating in this way as 96372, which is for injection. J1100, which is for the drug, and 73020 LD, which is for the radiological service or the X-ray that is being taken by the provider. So, for these procedures, the insurance companies require the medical necessity as to why are you reporting these services. So, only then the payer, when I say payer, it is the insurance company. The insurance company will give you the reimbursement only when the medical necessity is being met. So as this patient has this shoulder injury, which is S4992XA, YUM25.512 and V48.5XXA, so these codes amply prove the medical necessity of the services what the provider has rendered. I hope this would have helped you all, you know, what, uh, so now you must have a fair idea of what exactly is this process of medical coding. Now, who all can claim that they are certified coders or who has the authority to work as coders? So generally, if a person has to acquire any you know, a professionalism in his uh, career, he needs to hone uh, his skill sets and acquire some credentials, right? So in order to be a coder, it's not that you have to clear all these exams, but still this shows your degree of professionalism. So now you become a qualified person to do your job, right? So in order for a coder to acquire a credential from various organizations, there are certain authorities who provide these specialty credentials or who provide the credentials that equip yourself to hone your skill sets in the journey of uh, your as a medical coder. One is AHIMA, which is American Health Information Management Association. Next is AAPC, which is the American Academy of Professional Coders. I am affiliated with this particular organization. And there are also so, so many other various uh, boards like PACs. Uh, they offer like specialty credentials. So what are these certifications? So these are credentials. So they have their own abbreviations and there are so many abbreviations that are there with this industry. A few of them, just for your understanding is, CCS meaning a Certified Coding Specialist, CPC meaning a Certified Professional Coder, CMCS Certified Medical Coding Specialist, and your specialty coding credentials. So as medicine, medicine is not just one specialty, right? Medicine has so many departments underneath like pathology, radiology, or ophthalmology, gynecology. So for that, each of these medical departments, so we have more than 30 different medical coding credentials. So on top of all these credentials, there is also one accreditation that is being given by these uh, agencies, which is a CPMA, which is a, a credential for medical auditor and for compliance officer at CPCO. Again, I just want to mention that these are not the only credentials available in the healthcare. There are so many compliance organizations and auditing organizations like NAMAS who provide their own credentials. Now everybody's expectation is what is the salary and incentives that are available with this industry? I can tell you medical coders are really paid well. Though in the initial years it appears to be less, 
But as they move in the hierarchy, definitely they are rewarded for the quality and for the roles and responsibilities they handle. A fresher in medical coding earns from 10,000 to 14,000 and that depends on the companies. So that's why there is no specific value as, uh, as a salary. So here is a range. So the first, initially the coder starts with a 10,000 to a 14,000 salary per month. And then there is an increase in salary every six months or one year. And that depends on the company where the coder works. At least there is a hike of 4,000 per year. Having worked as a senior manager in the companies, I myself have provided the appraisal for so many of my staff where I have provided them even 7,000 hike at a single instance. So the more exams you crack, the more you earn. So the more you learn, the more you earn. So that is the mantra of medical coding. So what is the nature of job? So after coming to the salary details, what is the nature of job? So because many wonder what kind of a work it is. It is purely a system based work. It is not a clinical work. But if you have a good knowledge of medicine, or if you have a background with your clinical experience, that will help you immensely by discharging your work as a medical coder. It's typically an eight to nine hours of work where the weekends are holidays, so you can plan your weekends. You will be provided the CL or the SL, like casual leave or a sick leave based on the company's policy and of course on the government policies. You will be given holidays on the national holidays, whether it is a US holidays or whether the Indian holidays, whichever you want. And you also have the other benefits like insurance benefits, maternity leave and this paternity leave benefits. Where can you work as a coder? So once you crack these exams, this, these exams are of, have an international reputation on international recognition. So you can clear these exams and you can work in various companies like in USA or Australia or in UAE or Dubai or Philippines and anywhere in India as well. Okay, so this gives you an easy ticket for you to fly to different countries and where along with your profession you can also you know uh, make uh, travel around the globe with this uh, coding as a career so what are the jobs currently in chennai chennai is actually a hub for medical coding in fact the first uh, chapter for this aapg was started in chennai so this shows that you know the recognition that chennai has among the medical coders and of course the medical billers because we also have our office in Chennai, the AAPZ office in Chennai. So there are so many companies that offer a work as a medical coder which is some of you are Hetzel Technologies, Dell, Cognizant, TCS, Episodes, Ejuba, E4E, etc. etc. Apart from these, you know, we also have so many smaller medical billing companies there are like hundreds and two hundreds and thousands of medical billing companies where who have immense requirement for medical coders so now here comes a question who's eligible so i'm being approached by so many students or, or people who are working different in the sectors as well what is the eligibility to work as a medical coder to be frank, the eligibility is either it should be a diploma holder or an undergraduate. And again, now coming to this graduation, so companies might look into your graduation as well. If you are a medical, like say you are an MBBS or a BHMS or a BAMS, etc., you will be easily selected. Or if you are a nursing or a paramedical guy like PPT and BOT or B farm, so this is a apt industry for you to you know to show your talents. And if you are a life science like microbiology, zoology, or biochemistry, just think your graduation should have the letters B I O meaning bio. 
say if you're an engineer but has done biotechnology or biomedical engineering, so you will be the right candidate to join the industry. Now, many of my students who reach out, many of my you know, people who reach out for this training like, are from engineering sectors, unfortunately, because uh, with the current uh, curriculum that the engineering sector is not able to provide the required jobs for those engineers, for the students who pass out in engineering, Many engineers approach me uh, and inquire about this medical coding industry. For them, I want to tell them one thing. See, if you're an engineer, you can still join. There's no doubt about it. But before that, you need to really prove your professionalism and your seriousness. It's not just for the sake of job you can come into medical coding because it is a profession, as I say. It's not a mechanical way of working and doing and running away. No, it is not like that. You will have to constantly learn and update yourself. Otherwise, you will be chased out in the competition. So, I won't tell this upfront to all of my students or the people who aspire to come into medical coding. Please don't believe blindly if any training institutes tell you, hey, that I can give you a job. No, it doesn't go that way. If you are an arts student or if you are from a non-science like commerce or history kind of or engineering so you will have to clear you will have to undergo the basic education first and then the certifying examination once you complete those certifying exams you can certainly carve a niche into this field now at last if you have any queries you can always reach out to Dr. Ram's Medical Coding Academy. So I have given my details, uh, my emails, plus my website details. You can also reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching this. And I'd like to uh, state that in future, I'm going to give more such videos and enlighten more about, the, you know, we will discuss medical coding in depth from everybody's perspective because a coder wears many hats. I want to keep you posted that a Tamil version of this entire video is also available and the details of which will be provided in the link below. We have come to the conclusion of this video. So I would request you to provide your valuable comments, your suggestions and feedback and subscribe these videos so that this would help me to provide more and more quality education to our entire community. So we not only just get a job, we also indirectly elevate the economic status of our own country. So let us learn and shine and through Dr. Ram's Academy. Please subscribe. Thank you.